uh, nginx uh, or like a any other api gateway okay let's start with authentication and security so with an api gateway when i use a uh, sends a request to your service, that is your API gateway, you can set up authentication. So this can be simple stuff like uh, a key value pair, uh, JWT token, or you can use uh, uh, other, uh, other platforms, other third party platforms, uh, something like uh, OAuth or, uh, uh, or any other third party tool. So it, it not only uh, lets you control who access your APIs, but you can also get the user info once the user is authenticated uh, with your API gateway, and you can uh, you can modif you can make your API a bit tailor made so that uh, you can uh, you can give each user a tailor made experience. Another one is rate limiting. So rate limiting can be uh, intentional, uh, something like denial of service attacks, or it could also be unintentional. So maybe like your site got really popular, your application got really popular, and there are a lot of users uh, trying to access your application at the same time. So this could happen in a multitude of ways, but you have to make your services reliable enough to, uh, to work against this, right? So an API gateway uh, can, can help you do that. So if the number of requests exceeds a certain threshold, you can choose to reject or delay the request so that your backend application or your actual APIs uh, can handle those requests. Uh, now let's look into monitoring and observability. So you are only as good as your monitoring solution because if something happens, if some error occurs or some, if there are some issues, you need to be able to identify it. You need to be able to uh, have data on it to to actually uh, to actually uh, protect against it. So an API gateway like Apache API six integrates with a lot of uh, 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 observability tools, so like tracers, so things like Open Telemetry. So API six integrates with Open Telemetry and uh, and loggers. So you need logs coming in from your API gateways from your backend applications. And you also need metrics, so st stuff like Prometheus. It, it needs to be integrated with stuff like Prometheus. So all of these stuff can be handled centrally within an API gateway. So when you think when you think of a system without an API gateway, you need to actually add all of these into each of your applications, each of your microservice application. So an API gateway makes it much easier to do that. Another aspect of this, another aspect of reliability is version control and zero downtime. So you have to make sure that you are able to bump new versions, release new version of your application without, without your users experiencing any downtime. And you can do this with something called a canary release. So this is a release strategy that is being followed in like the software engineering world. So you have your uh, v1.0 api and you are trying to uh, switch it with a v2.0 uh, api and initially you have all of your all of your traffic being routed to v1.0 so api gateway is routing all traffic to v1.0 and uh, you have v2.0 deployed in your deployed in your uh, server and initially, you can route some traffic. So 5% is a, a nice number. So you can route 5% of the real traffic to your new version of the application. And the API gateway lets you do that. So uh, in Apache AP6, this is handled dynamically. So uh, you, you don't need to like restart the gateway to make this change. But uh, uh, some percent, percent of the traffic is now being routed to the v2 auto application so uh, so you can test your application with real traffic but you are only uh, testing it with a small percentage of the traffic so if any issue occurs or if your application is uh, not working as you intended or if there are any bugs you can easily identify it without affecting most of the users 
And finally, when you have tested the new version of your application, you can deploy or you can configure the API gateway to route all traffic to your new version of the application. And there is always an option to roll back to the older version of the application if you have an API gateway. Uh, next up, we have circuit breaking. So this is similar to how circuit breakers in electrical circuits work. So the main goal of a circuit breaker in an electric, electrical circuit is to like protect your applications from faulty uh, components. So if you have a faulty service or if you have a service that is uh, experiencing some downtime, you need to cut it away from your system. If you don't do that, what happens is like it can cascade into other services. So if upstream A1 is not working and you are still trying to send requests to this uh, upstream service, uh, this request will fail and this will cause a bottleneck in your system. So you have to uh, make sure that you cut it off from the system. So an API gateway uh, can check the uh, can uh, run health checks with these uh, backend applications. And if they are faulty, they will cut it out from the system. And the API gateway can keep polling, polling the system. And once the service is back online, it can uh, restart sending requests to this uh, service. And finally, uh, redirects. So uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the talk, Reliability not only means reliability of your services, but also means reliability for your users, for your client applications. So redirects uh, are a way to do that. So if you are deprecating or like if you are uh, changing your API endpoint, uh, a client application might need to change their uh, change their endpoint as well. So this is an additional overhead to the clients. So if you are doing this frequently, you don't want your clients constantly changing their uh, code to like uh, work with your API. So an API gateway acts as a middleman. And even if the user sends the old API endpoint, an API gateway can redirect the users to the new API. And it can also send a, a deprecation notice with a, a 300 status code. And this will help uh, users to like transition to the new API in a more smooth way. All right. And uh, before I go, like I want to talk about the project and the community. So Apache API 6 is a project under the Apache Software Foundation, and it is entirely built by the community. So the Apache Foundation has this uh, motto of, uh, which can be summed up as community over code. And this project is entirely community driven. And we have community members from around the world. So yeah. And if you're interested in contributing to API 6, uh, feel free to do so. So contributions of any kind are welcome. You can contribute code. You can help us by testing out API 6. You can share how you're using API 6. You can help us write blog posts or give talks like this. So you can check check that out as well if you are interested. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me now. Uh, and you can check out API 6. And there is also uh, an article version of this talk. So if you want to look at all these diagrams, you can check that check that article out as well. Yeah, thank you. I guess I have a lot of time for questions. <laughs> So we do have Kishan. Oh, yeah, no worries. Uh, yeah, so um, my question is basically, um, I, I'm trying to uh, 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 basically find out uh, what exactly this is, why this is different from load balancing. It seems to be a lot of features are very close to load balancing, load balancing except for things like uh, the, the monitoring and the logging. Uh, but does it do things like, you know, integrating multiple um, uh, APIs. So, is that like one of the one of the features that it has, or or is it more more like a, you know it's a it's quite a, a more advanced version of load balancing essentially? Yeah, like uh, it does load balancing. 
So load balancing is a. I, I, I guess. I guess it, it's a superset of what a load balancer is. So an API gateway can do load balancing. An API gateway can also batch requests, as you as you mentioned. So one request to the API gateway, and the API gateway will send multiple requests back to your services, collect all the information, and send it back as one package. So it does all all of that stuff, but it also gives you more features on top of that, better uh, control of your traffic. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, so I have a related question. So you mentioned uh, it has tracer support, um, right? And and I wonder uh, when this API calls the downstream API, and if you also use the same API gateway uh, for those downstream APIs, um, does the tracer integrate all the trace together? And uh, yeah, can you get into the detail, like how the tracer works? Okay. Uh, so the API gateway acts as the entry point to your whole backend services. So, uh, so when we talk about open telemetry, like this is where uh, an API gateway is the place where you get the trace ID generated. So, everything that uh, starts at the API gateway, it can uh, it can track. So, if you have instrumentation in your backend applications, uh, the API gateway can uh, trace the whole. The, the the whole the whole request so from from your api gateway to your service and if and like if you have databases maybe you can also instrument those databases to send out traces so an api gateway can be the central point and it, it collects all these and you can get it as a, a single da data yeah so there are uh... Many API gateway service uh, on all the platform. If you talk about AWS, they have API, AWS API gateway. In the Google also, Google APIs and all. So, have you done any kind of evaluation like uh, this uh, API six from Apache? How it is uh, different from them? What is the USP it is having, which is basically a differentiator uh, as per the other API gateways? What are those points? Those brownie points actually that would be really helpful if you can help us. Yeah, but that's a good question. So, first of all, API 6 is completely open source and it is hosted by the ASF, so that's a big point. And then, like, API 6 is built on top of Nginx, but it is a, a different build of Nginx that makes it much faster, much more dynamic, and uh, much more, uh, much less, uh, and cost much less overhead to your infrastructure. So, being fast is uh, being fast and making makes it uh, really scalable. So as your applications grow, uh, I'm talking in the range of millions of uh, traffic, millions of requests per second. So in such scenarios, API six really shines compared to other alternatives. And when when you talk about big cloud providers, uh, you you can always end up in scenarios like where you are tied to the vendor, but Apache API six like lets you get away from that because like you can easily uh, switch to a different API gateway if you want, because API 6 supports a lot of uh, uh, a lot of common specifications. So, like, uh, yeah, so like if you're using Kubernetes, there is a Kubernetes ingress API, and there is also a Kubernetes gateway API. So, API 6 supports all of these. And even if you decide to switch API gateways, you don't need to change your configuration. And API and like this will work seamlessly. And there is also the case for multi-cloud or like hybrid cloud scenarios where you don't necessarily want to like be tied to one cloud provider and uh, a gateway like API 6 can uh, like help you avoid that. Yeah. Uh, other questions? Uh, Okay, uh, so uh, API six has all, API six has this plugin architecture. So there is the core API six, and uh, all, all of these features, all of these uh, things like rate limiting and uh, observability are uh, implemented through plugins. And let, let me just uh, 
show you the docs. We have multiple. Uh, we have multiple plugins for weight limiting. So, uh, yeah. So this plugin limit rate uh, li uh, limits the number of uh, uh, rate limits based on number of requests. And we also have things like limit the number of uh, simultaneous connections a user can have with the API gateway. And you can also do things like limit limit based on count. But you can also uh, make it more complicated by like uh, setting up rules for specific users. So you can set up authentication. And once the user is authenticated, you can give them a certain limits. So this particular user has. Uh, 60 can make 60 API calls in a minute, or like uh, a paid user can make uh, 600 API calls in a minute, or something like that. So API 6 really lets you do that. And uh, if you have a, a more complex scenario that is not supported within API 6 plugins, you can also create your own plugins. So you can use Lua, or like you can use all of these other programming languages. So API 6 also supports multiple. Uh, multiple plugin runners. So if you can write Java plugins, you can write Go plugins. Uh, we are also working on a Wasm integration. So basically, you can write a plugin in any language and port it to Wasm and like run it with API 6. So yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it should be possible, but, but like not out of the box, I guess. Uh, like you can set, you can write your custom code to like uh, pull metrics from like Prometheus or somewhere, and then like or or uh, set up your own monitoring system and then uh, like evaluate and run. Uh, yeah, limit as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, so, so if you need to, so the question was how you can up, upgrade the API gateway. Yeah, so yeah, look, uh, I guess it is similar to how you update all the other uh, software because uh, you you can do something like a canary release as well, because if you have multiple instances of API six deployed. Or like if, if you're talking at that scale, you need to have some, some sort of load balancer in front of that, and then probably do a canary release or uh, something similar so that like uh, the traffic is not uh, dropped in between. But the process is quite seamless. Like uh, we, do, uh, we do have a LTS version, and we also have edge releases. So most people like they stick to one particular version and they like they take time to like update to a new version of API 6, but yeah, it, that's how we do it. Okay, uh, so, so. One question was, what kind of communication protocols we support? So, uh, so all, all the different types of APIs, so like REST, gRPC, GraphQL, and like we also support multiple protocols. So, uh, we recently had a user who have been using API 6 for IoT applications, so that uses MQTT protocol. Uh, so, it is it, it is pretty vast, and like another use case of an API gateway is like. To convert between multiple protocols, so you might have a gRPC application or you might have a GraphQL application, but your APIs or your client is uh, in a REST model, so you would want to uh, translate between those different kinds of uh, API API types, right? So an API gateway can be a facilitator for that. Uh, and the other question was about service discovery. So API six integrates with uh, uh, service discovery platforms as well. So like, uh, let, let's see, like, uh, uh, 
so ap6 integrates with all of these uh, platforms so if you talk talk about kubernetes like ap6 integrates with kubernetes default service discovery uh, system uh, let's see like uh, there should be some documentation somewhere here oh yeah so you can see all these uh, so all these registries all these different uh, things that ap6 supports so yeah you can definitely integrate with that and like it will do a service discovery yeah. you can also do it manually as well like so if you have a yaml file where you are automatically populating uh, your services or like your backend services ap6 can watch that and like do automatic service discovery yeah thank you yeah. thank you